Now, a few days ago, I visited bike builder extraordinaire Alan Milliard at his gaff in Berkshire. My mouth dropped open so many times, I felt like Joe 90. Alan, why? But Alan doesn't just build amazing bikes, he rides them too. So here we are today up at Elvington Airfield in Yorkshire for a speed weekend, two days of record-breaking mayhem. There are plenty of superbikes up here, but few of them compare to Alan's Dodge Viper custom bike. OK, so just a reprise, right? Alan has come here to Elvington to try and do 200 miles an hour on that. The bike has more brake horsepower than a Bugatti Veyron and more chutzpah than a New York waiter. Even the great drag racer Pip Hyam looks a bit overawed. That's a block of cubic horsepower sitting there, isn't it? And I just think it's such a, a stunning piece of kit. But you're not nervous with these kind of things, are you? No, everyone's a little tiny bit nervous. Yeah, I am. We're all a little bit nervous. This yeah. is a monster of a bike. And I have ridden just it. My, my, I have ridden it at 200 miles an hour at Runton Hill. So I know I can do it, but doing it again is another thing, you know? There's the competition. Check that out. That's Jeff Einsberg's Mad Max bike, powered by a Rolls-Royce turbine, usually found in a helicopter. What's life like at 200? Well, for me, it's weird. The future seems to come to here. Like, when I go through the lights, the, the end of the runway feels like it's there. The vibration, you get tunnel vision, and it's, it all happens from about 185 onwards. Up to about 185, it's just cruising. It's, it's easy, it's simple. I don't know if I'd call 185 cruising speed, but if any bike can do it, this one can. Hey, Alan, great yeah. luck, mate. We'll be up there with you, mate, at the start. Fantastic. Yeah, and by the way, if you ever ask me to do the pillion record with you, I will kill you. All right. <laughs> Enough talk. Time for action. Ride number one. This exercise is called the Flying Eighth. You get a one-mile run-up and then pin it. He's so fast, the cameraman can't keep up. But in fact, he reaches a mere 170 miles an hour. It's so smooth, it's dead straight, everything's great. But I've got a tiny bit of a misfire. I think the fuel pressure's a little bit low. I'm going to wind up my um, servo and see if that makes a difference. All right, so, good first shakedown run. Uh, we're just going to have a little tinker, and then we might just wind it up a little. Run number two, and the bike still isn't quite right. Alan's worried that one of the crankshaft sensors may have failed, so he ropes in his brother to check it out. No spark. OK, no spark. So that basically means, technically, the term is... It's <laughs> 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 That's not embarrassing at all. It's not embarrassing. Well, Alan says it's embarrassing. It's not embarrassing, Alan. You're well, running. It doesn't go wrong. It doesn't go wrong. It always works. Yeah, but the thing is, is that sometimes it has to go wrong. Yeah. You know, for you to then make sure that it won't go wrong again. Unfortunately, it's third time lucky. The Viper still isn't quite perfect, but Alan gets his best time so far. So, look, that's the final run for the Viper. Standing, so that's basically terminal velocity, 182.456. Flying eighth, mate, 180. Not bad, is it? We're considering the engines playing up a little bit and my bottle and everything, so I'm well chuffed. Alan, that's fantastic. Well chuffed. Well done, My mate. fastest time here. God, that's great. So, that's what they're for. It's pointless making something and then leaving it in the lounge. It's got to be used. And use it hard. Within, yeah. within your bottle. I mean, I haven't got the bottle to wring that neck, but... Absolutely. But um, not many people have. Alan, thank yeah. you for letting me into your life it's for a couple great. of days. Yeah. Mate, really, what a really fantastic good. time.